Hey guys, it's Emma. Okay, so we've been covering the Summer Wells case and there was an interview last night on the interview room. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you go across and watch it. And it was Hunter being interviewed by the, the interview room. He was interviewing Hunter and asking him all the right questions. All the questions that, you know, we would have wanted to ask and probably would not think to ask or maybe afterwards would think, oh, why didn't we ask that? And he did a really good job of it, obviously because of his background in the police. I think he was a detective or something. And he did a really good job of interviewing Hunter. And so, like I say, he asked all the right questions. Now, I listened to the whole thing and there was two points. Well, I mean, lots of it stood out to me, but there was two points that really, really stood out to me. And the first one was that that day, whilst Hunter was in the car with the rest of them, and they were traveling to go fishing, to go swimming. Apparently Candace received a telephone call. It was from Donald. And so she'd asked everybody to be quiet while she answered this call from Donald. And everybody be, everybody was quiet. And the, I think uh, Hunter had been on TikTok. So Hunter had turned his TikTok off. And, and so he'd listen, he'd, he was listening in. And at the end of the call, he said to Candace, well, who was that? And so Candace said, oh, it was Donald. Donald was calling to say that there was somebody on the property. Now, this was, you know, kind of midday, just after midday. And so apparently Hunter did think at the time, why would Donald know that there was somebody on the property, given the fact that he was at work? Now, apparently Hunter thought this, but never actually asked or questioned Candace about it. As far as he was concerned, Donald was at work, so he thought it was strange that Donald would know that there was somebody hanging around their property. Now, he did mention the name, but it was bleeped out of the interview. Now, as we've all seen from looking at the Google Earth images of that property, there is absolutely no way, really, of properly homing in on that property. It's see that from Google Maps. It really is. When they did say that there was a lot of harsh terrain, they meant it. It's set back in, in the woods, up a steep driveway, and you can't really make that property out of um, or like from almost all the trees and I think all the neighbours they're quite spread out you know they're not next door to each other as, as you might open your door and be able to see your neighbour's car on the drive these properties are spread out and you can't see the next door neighbour's property from where you are so it's not like one of the neighbours has seen this particular person wandering around on Donald's property and rung him while he's been at work and said, you know, there's a guy hanging around on your property because you wouldn't see Donald in Kansas's property from a neighbour's house. You wouldn't see it from the road. So it just seemed like a strange thing to me that really stood out to me. How would Donald know if he was at work that there was somebody hanging around the property? Now, the second thing that really stood out to me during that interview was that apparently Candace had turned up two days after being interviewed by the TBI, two days after her daughter had gone missing, she turned up at Ali and Hunter's house. She was asking them not to mention the alcohol to the police, but Hunter, if I heard it right, Hunter did actually say, you know, I've already mentioned that. Now, at one point, I think because Hunter and his mother had already discussed you know do we think Candace had anything to do with them but some are disappearing it was already something that they discussed between the two of them so when Candace turned up that couple of days after summer had disappeared it wasn't mentioned how she was whether she was acting upset or whether she was distraught in any way that wasn't mentioned but what was mentioned was the fact that Hunter apparently picked up Candace's phone. Now, apparently it's a very similar phone to the one that uh, Hunter had. So he picked up Candace's phone in order to try and work out if she had anything to do with the disappearance of Summer. And he'd replaced her phone with his phone. She'd gone to the car to get something. And while she'd gone to the car, he had apparently gone through her phone. He said that he went in the trash part of her emails, messages, in order to try and see if there was anything in there that stood out that was wrong, that, you know, was strange. And apparently he found that there was 13 deleted messages to her uh, dealer within the trash bin. Hunter was just about to read these messages from 
Candace to the dealer, but they were all deleted out of her inbox. And he thought that that was very strange. The only message that Hunter saw on Candace's phone was the one that said, it's done. I think Candace had realised what was going on and that he had a phone and she came running up the drive to get the phone off him. Make of that what you want. Make of that what you will. Everybody's going to have their own theories. I'm sure the TBI has this information. Why there has not been any arrests yet, I've no idea. If there is any more information on this case, I will be sure to let you know as soon as I have it. Thanks for listening again, guys. Please subscribe. Please press the like on your way out. Thank you.